Kia ora. Welcome to Cobblestones Chronicles. And this is number 10, would you believe? I can't believe it's the 10th program already. I'm delighted to be here this morning to talk about cobblestones and what we're doing and what's been going on and also to give you a bit of background to some of the things that we've got at cobblestones. I've picked out a couple of curious objects today to talk about, things that are a bit unusual. And um, But first of all, I do want to say that we're really sorry we had to cancel our open day this month. It should have been last Sunday, that Sunday a week ago. And um, we just had, we just couldn't go ahead with it because um, we are very conscious of everyone's safety. And we thought, no, we just cannot make sure this happens. And I had been to something else where I noticed that people had forgotten often about the things that keep us safe, about, you know, wearing masks and keeping um, a couple of metres apart. So we decided, no, we're not going to do it. We'll wait until we get to level one. So please keep a look at our Facebook page and um, and then... Hopefully, we'll be able to go ahead. Uh, we're really planning some really exciting events in over the next few months, including a play at Cobblestones in March, in early March, outdoors. Uh, we're also, of course, having carols at Cobblestones just before Christmas. And we're also looking to do the grand finale of the Tweed Ride come Easter time. So... Let's hope that by then we um, are able to have fewer restrictions and everybody's been vaccinated and, and we can start opening up again. It's very exciting. But I thought uh, this morning I would start off with a, a lovely song, um, a sea shanty, in fact. Um, this sea shanty is um, called Barrett's Shanty. It's named after... Uh, Mr. Barrett, who was a famous um, publican, and he was a whaler, and uh, this song is uh, about his whaling, his whaling exploits, and um, it's not quite true because he didn't actually die from the flick of a whale's tail, as you'll hear later, but um, he. Um, he is buried, I believe, in um, in Wellington. And, of course, he was around Wellington. And in the early days, the, the sea was the main mode of transport to get things around the coast before we had that wonderful road over the Rimatakas um, and, and the tracks. Um, often people would actually come all the way around the coast. So the first settlers brought um, their goods and things around the coast as well as over the Rimatakas. And um, we also, of course, depended on ships. There was lots and lots of ships that used to come around. So I thought we'd celebrate that today by um, playing Barrett Shanty. So bear with me for just a moment while I switch it on. And it's coming up now. This is... um. This is a version by Mike Harding. In the days of sail before I was born My father sailed around Cape Horn With me uncle through a raging storm With a whaler called Dick Barrett And the harpoon struck on And the line it ran out And the whale gave a flurry with its tail and we lost poor Dickie Barrett to a hundred barrel whale And no more he'll go roving on the sea, bonny lads No more he'll go roving on the sea I remember well that fateful day When the people lined up on the quay and Dickie Barrett was heard to say There she blows, lay to your oars, lads And the harpoon struck home And the line it ran out 
And the whale gave a flurry with its tail And we lost poor Dickie Barrett To a hundred barrel whale And no more he'll go roving on the sea, bonny lads No more he'll go roving on the sea Had a box made out of a remu wood New Plymouth round in morning stood Asking why to die he should That brave whaler Dickie Barrett And the harpoon struck home And the line it ran out And the whale gave a flurry with its tail And we lost poor Dickie Barrett To a hundred barrel whale And no more he'll go roving on the sea, bonnie lads No more he'll go roving on the sea The story of Dickie Barrett of Barrett's Reef, because that's, of course, who, where, who Barrett's Reef at the entrance to Wellington Harbour is named after. Isn't it interesting how we celebrate so many of our early settlers by naming things after them, bits, streets and lots of other things? Um, I'm going to show you now uh, the... I'm going to talk now about a very curious object, a very large bike. It's absolutely, it's a good foot or um, 25 centimetres higher than most other bikes. And that's because it belonged to Constable Andy Gregor who was the policeman in Greytown from 1921 until 1948. And he'd emigrated from Scotland and he um, had served in Masterton and Carterton before he came to Greytown. And he was very, very tall, as because it used to be that policemen had to be above a certain height. Um, it's not the, quite the case these days, but... He was exceptionally tall man, uh, for and he was six foot five inches. That's one point nine five meters, for those of us who work in meters these days. And this bike was specially imported from Scotland in nineteen o six, and you can see it at cobblestones. And for those of you, um, watching, on. TV, you it will come up on your. You can see it on the screen now, and this is one of a number of curious objects that we have at cobblestones to help us tell the stories of the people who lived in Greytown and surrounds, um, and in fact all across the wider Rapa. So apart from our six heritage listed buildings, we also have lots of bits and pieces that people have given us over the years. And um, this bike is specially made, as I said, and it's a very interesting object. Um, I um, had the opportunity of standing up against it the other day. And in fact, um, because I'm not quite as tall as that, in fact, I'm a good foot shorter than that, um, then it seemed, you know, it's like, wow, you know, how on earth would you ride this? Um, apart from uh, Constable McGregor, apart from uh, being very tall, seemingly he was also very thin. And one of the ladies who used to drive through Greytown on a fairly regular basis said that she reckoned that he used to hide behind the lampposts because he was so thin he could hide behind the lampposts and jump out to catch her speeding on a regular basis. So I guess he was the um, forerunner of speed cameras um, 
because that's what speed cameras, of course, are for. They're deterrents for speeding, not necessarily to catch you speeding, although they do. They stop the idea is they stop you speeding. So that's, as I said, one of the very curious of. One of the very curious objects we've got, a very big bike. And it's quite interesting to um, hear the stories behind our curious objects. So that's what I'm going to be talking about over the next few weeks. If you're interested in history and you enjoy meeting people, I do have um, a, an appeal for you. Come and volunteer at Cobblestones. It's great fun. We have a, we really enjoy it. You get terrific training, and um, it's about looking after our visitors and talking to them about you know what you can see at Cobblestones, and it's just a delight to come and meet people because they so enjoy it. We get a lot of. Um, in older people coming in with the grandchildren and the kids just love going round cobblestones and seeing all the things uh, that are there and exclaiming about it and of course often if you're about my age you would be able to explain to the children how washing machines were used with ringers and all those kind of exciting things. So before um, I move on now to talk about um, one of the things that women did in early days, and that was cheese making. And before I do that, I'm going to play a song by a lady called Rachel Doick, who has collected stories of pioneer women and um, she has so made songs about them. And this is a, a lovely song um, called um, Picking at the Bones. It's, it's very evocative because it kind of says, you know, you're, you're doing something that you love, but it's, you're not getting much return on it and life is a bit difficult. So um, I'll play you Rachel's song now. Picking at the bones. I shook all the streets as I walked through the town. My head in a battle between right and wrong. But I think I would have gone crazy that night if you hadn't rolled the grass out for me to lay down. I was grateful for Blaze to sleep Were you the one I was destined to meet? The road feels long when you're dragging your life around you each day Wheels always caught on those uneven stones Money doesn't come if you stay standing still Well it's hard to make a living when you're picking at the bones But I'm grateful to be doing what I love But even love turns sour when there's a price involved Ooh. So far away Don't think life's that simple Don't think everything's okay You know I've been bleeding You know life wanted to walk away But I don't have a choice anymore Cause I can't breathe 
any other way But I'm grateful to be doing what I love And even love turns sour when there's a price involved But I'm grateful to be doing what I love And even love turns sour when there's a price involved and that was Rachel Dowick with Picking at the Bones. And um, for those of you watching on TV now, I've just popped up a photograph of the cheese-making machine, and I'll describe it. It's basically... Um, about a third of a barrel deep and barrel shaped and it has a handle on the side which you turned laboriously to make the curd and cheese making was mainly a woman's project they would it was mostly made by women and Gilpin and Pardon set up a cheese factory in Featherston that was the first in the Wairarapa in 1880 Um, The Greytown Company was the first established on a cooperative basis, and that was Coleman Phillips of Dry River Station. Cooperative dairy factories were owned by individual farmers, giving them a stake in the local economy. In time, many amalgamated to take advantage of production and marketing efficiencies. But an example of one person's input into the production of cheese is Catherine Matheson of the Otago Dairy Cheese Factory. Within her kitchen, whey was drawn from the cheese vat, heated in large tubs and then carried back into the cheese factory and poured into the vat to bring everything to the right temperature. The company made almost four tonnes of Scottish Dunlop cheese. And Dunlop cheese is a bit like a cheddar cheese. It's the same, you know, hard block cheese. And earned uh, sorry, £246 in its first season. But it only paid poor Mrs Matheson £5 for her trouble. So it really was quite... Um, a lot of a lot of trouble making cheese because it was very onerous going backwards and forwards heating up the milk making sure it was the right temperature so it was it was a very busy part thing to do um now over the next few weeks, I am going to tell you more about each of our buildings at Cobblestones. And I'd really love to hear from you if there's anything that you would really like to have um, to hear about. So please do contact me and um, you can contact me through Cobblestones Facebook page. Just send a a private message, send a message and I will get it because I clear our Facebook page and I'll try my best to tell you more about it. Um, Before we finish the programme today, I'd just like to play you one more song and um, I thought you might quite enjoy this song by uh, Mike Harding. It's called Shaky Isles. And I don't know if um, you felt the earthquake last 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 week. I certainly did. It was a bit too exciting, really. I'd much rather have. Um, I'd much rather the ground didn't shake. Not having grown up in New Zealand, I'm of course not very used to it, and. Um, When I came back to live in New Zealand uh, about 10 years ago with my husband when we returned here, we came to Wellington and we'd always lived in Auckland before then. And about a week after I was here, Wellington had an earthquake, which was a bit perturbing. Um, And I said to my husband, "Uh, do these happen often? He said, no, it's all right, only about maybe once a year or something. So I've got used to them now. 
But here we go. Here's the Shaky Isles by Mike Harding. <laughs> white cloud at the edge of the sea thrown up by underground activity dormant volcanoes like sleeping dogs lie around the pacific a long ring of fire fold lines through the beehive and buildings too tall like a mask mirrored glass tries to hide empty floors when the earth shakes the ground breaks and share markets fall in the shaky aisles out on the rim shippers stay to one sailed upon unmarked seas uncharted water on unborrowed steam below the horizon around the next bend Followed the rainbow to where it would end Now we drift to the right as these corners are turned Take us in circles back where we began Dictating directions you'd think we'd have learned And these shaky aisles out on the rim There'll always be some try to stop the sunset like Maui, they put too much faith in a net Feeling the pressure from sea and on land Blackmailed and threatened by fair weather friends Puppet dictators, corruption and graft The Pentagon pulls on their strings and they dance Terrorists strike at the warriors' heart And these shaky aisles out on the rim Black mist on Maralinga Grey snow on Arongo Lab White sun under Mururoa Whitewash to cover the cracks At the edge of the ocean an empty land lies And looks to the east now to see the sunrise While our neighbour Australia looks to the west to a fast fading empire on which the sun sits Battlefields getting much closer to home Dividing lines to redefine new battle zones Around the perimeter fires still glow And in the shaky house out on the rim Around the perimeter fires still glow And in the shaky house out on the rim And that's Shaky Hours by Mike Harding. Thanks for listening today. It was great to um, be with you. And uh, you'll be able to listen to this program again on our Facebook page and on ROFM's Facebook page. And I will be here again in a couple of weeks. Have a lovely day. Thank you. Bye.